Nearly half of the country has now chosen party nominees for November's midterm elections. Yesterday's primaries from South Carolina to Nevada made clear that for many Republicans, loyalty to Donald Trump is still the key to success. The biggest win for the former president came in the Palmetto State, where five-term incumbent Congressman Tom Rice, one of the 10 House Republicans who supported Trump's impeachment, was pushed out by pro-Trump State Representative Russell Fry. The Washington Post Annie Linsky has been following yesterday's results, and she joins me now. Welcome back to the News Hour, Annie Linsky. So let's start by talking about these South Carolina House races. There were two of them I want to ask you about, but one, this resounding rejection of Tom Rice by voters uh, in his Republican, uh, this Republican primary. He never backed down in his criticism of President Trump. Now, that's right. Uh, he essentially doubled down, using a, employing a different strategy than we've seen with other Republicans. Republicans who have gotten the ire of Trump. He said that, he, you know, he, he voted for him to impeach the president and um, continued to talk about it on the trail. He said to one of my colleagues, calling Trump a tyrant. And, you know, the, pres the former president reads this coverage very closely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he continued at it and he attracted a, a um, you know, a Trump back challenger. And we saw him lose. I mean, we had gone into yesterday thinking perhaps it would go to a runoff, but it was a resounding defeat. Two to one. Um, but different story in another South Carolina district we've been watching, Representative Nancy Mace. She didn't vote to impeach President Trump, but she did side with Vice President Pence in saying that he couldn't uh, certify or couldn't refuse to certify the 2020 election results. Former President Trump didn't like that. He went after her. But she continued to say nice things about him in her race, even though she wasn't endorsed by him. Right. And then and had a different result. I mean, she right. also had a primary challenger who was also backed by Trump. So it's not as if Trump really accepted the sort of olive branch that she reached out to him with. But on the trail, her posture was really different. And she kept on saying good things about him. She, you know, went to Trump Tower and, and famously recorded a video explaining why she's with him and why her, his supporters should back him. So she really kind of bowed down to him in a way that Rice did not. And then you saw very different results where she was able to stay in power yeah. and he was not. And I think what it's emerging here is a potential playbook for Republicans who do somehow, you know, cross Trump in some ways. If they stand up to him, they better yeah. very quickly turn around and, um, you know, try to make amends. And, of course, depending on how they read the, their constituents, you know, in their district or their state. Yeah. But let's talk about Nevada now. We're yeah. looking at a couple of statewide races there, Senate, governor, and then the secretary of state. This is where former President Trump's endorsements, a clear plus, Adam Laxalt uh, running for the Senate, uh, eagerly endorsed by, yes. uh, lashed himself to, to, to President Trump. And then a really, talk about that, but also really interesting Secretary of oh, State yes, yes. candidate. I mean, I, you know, I hate to do, do this, but um, coming out of Nevada, you know, Donald Trump really did have a royal flush. I mean, every, every, every person he endorsed ended up advancing. And, you know, the, um, the Laxalt seat is particularly interesting. That's a the um, Senate primary. The Senate primary, and you know he was backed not only by Trump but also by Trump's son, Donald Trump Jr., who in the last sort of moments of the campaign, the last days of the campaign, went out there campaigned with him. And so what you're seeing in Nevada is Donald Trump Jr. also sort of establishing a power base of his own. He did the same thing in Ohio, where he went out and really went in big for um, J.D. Vance, and there was a success there, too. And then the Secretary of State race, yeah. I and mean, that's really the one to watch, yeah. I think. I mean, you know, we're not used to paying close attention to Secretary of State races. For sure. I mean, I think most of for m most people probably didn't know what that position did before 2020. Um, but in this case, um, this a Secretary of State race, who's an uh, a Secretary of State candidate, who is an election denier and has yeah. has organized other election deniers around the country to run in Secretary of State. He's races. played an active role, Jim Marchand. Uh, Jim Marchand yeah. won last night, and I think that is something that the sort of pro democracy groups are. They were watching that race closely and are are really worried about his his advance because it changes the way that. 
you know, it's a, Nevada is a swing state, and he will have an incredible amount of influence over how Nevada's election is run in 2024. Because the role of if secretary... Wins, if he wins. That's right, general. if he wins. But the role of secretaries of state is typically to oversee elections, which could have huge consequences. Huge um, consequences, this, yes. In this November. A couple of uh, things I want to ask you about, but you've been doing some really interesting reporting in the last few days, uh, Annie Linsky, about in a few states, a few places around the country, Democrats, we know they're going to be running ads against Republicans, but right. they are running ads in some places for Republicans who they think may be a weaker opponent in the fall. This has been a tactic that I've been really astounded by. Um, on the one hand, you do have Democrats doing the January 6th committee hearings, talking about democracy, about the importance of drawing a line between, as Biden calls them, ultra-MAGA candidates. But some of the Democratic election committees are running ads to help promote the far-right candidates, right. believing they'll be a little easier to beat in November. You know, Democratic strategists that I've talked to say that this is a very dangerous game, and you have to be careful what you wish for. And you'll remember, of course, yeah. you know, Hillary Clinton thought that Donald Trump would be easy to beat, and that wasn't the case. So when you play these games, yeah. you do need to you, take you, you do need to be careful. What you're you wish for. You do. You're taking a risk. It's not something that uh, it, we, we have seen it before in American politics. Yes. Uh, but right now, it's something we are look, keeping a very close eye on. Annie Linsky, The Washington Post, thanks so much. Thank you. Great to be here.